Hi, congratulations on taking your first steps towards a healthier you. My name is Melanie and I am the practice nurse here at Melbourne Gastro Surgery. I have been a surgical nurse for 15 years and my role is to prepare you for your upcoming surgery as well as guide and support you through the journey. The following presentation has been created to address any common pre and post surgery questions and concerns you may have. Approximately one to two weeks prior to your scheduled surgery, you will receive a pre-operative phone call from me, the practice nurse. During this phone call, I will confirm your admission date and time into hospital, your surgery, fasting time and estimated length of stay in hospital. I will also conduct an overview of your medical history and your current medications with you. Instructions regarding the management of your medications will also be provided. All of your pre-operative work, such as recent blood tests, consent, confirmation of dietitian education, and any diagnostic tests and images will be also reviewed. Preparing for your hospital stay. A checklist of important items to bring into hospital include your Medicare card, health fund details, all of your current medications in their original packaging with clear labeling, toiletries, sleepwear or loose comfortable clothing and non-slip footwear, if you use any medical devices or walking aids, electronic devices such as an iPad or a laptop, and most importantly, a positive mental attitude. Pain management after surgery. Each individual perceives and tolerates pain differently. Wound discomfort and pain after surgery is normal and to be expected. Other complaints may include referred shoulder tip pain, this should settle down within 24 to 48 hours. Using a heat pack and gentle walking may help to alleviate this pain. During your hospital stay, your pain will be assessed and pain relieving medications will be regularly offered to you. Remember, experiencing some discomfort is normal providing it is tolerable. If your pain becomes intolerable, notify your attending nurse so they can give you additional pain relief. The key to your pain management is to address your pain or discomfort early. This is crucial and beneficial for your overall recovery and well-being. Prior to your discharge, discuss with your surgeon what pain relieving medications will be prescribed to take home with you. Medications. During your initial pre-operative consultation, your surgeon will note all of your current medications. As mentioned earlier, your medications will be reviewed and instructions regarding the management of your medications will be provided by the practice nurse during the preoperative phone call. If you already take blood thinning medications such as aspirin, warfarin, Eliquis or Plavix, you must ask your surgeon at your initial preoperative consultation if you're required to stop these and for how many days prior to your scheduled surgery. If your surgeon has advised you to stop taking your blood thinning medications, please ensure to check with your surgeon when to recommence these medications prior to your discharge from hospital. If you are a diabetic and take oral hypoglycemic medication or insulin, you will most likely be required to stop or change the dosage of your diabetic medication leading up to your surgery. This change will likely occur either two weeks prior to your surgery while you are on the Optifast fluid diet or when you are fasting in preparation for surgery. It is crucial that you discuss this with your surgeon during your initial preoperative consultation. It is important to note that any prior changes made to your diabetic medication regime prior or during your hospital stay should be re-clarified with your surgeon prior to your discharge from hospital. Your surgeon may ask you to self-administer a blood thinning injection called Clexane. Your surgeon will inform you of this during your hospital stay. This is to prevent the risk of developing deep vein thrombosis, known as DVT, and pulmonary embolism, known as PE. This involves one injection administered at the same time daily for two weeks after surgery. Nursing staff from the hospital will provide you with the education and demonstrate how to self-administer the Clexane injection. Supplies will also be provided to take home with you. If you feel you are unable to self-administer the injection, you may nominate a family member or a friend to do so for you. If this is the case, please inform the nursing staff. Alternatively, you may organise daily visits to your local doctor. Caring for your wounds. Your wounds are closed with dissolvable sutures and covered with a waterproof dressing. If soiled, the dressings will be changed by the nursing staff prior to your discharge. 
Leave these dressings in for five days. When removing the dressing, you may also remove the white strips called Steri-Strips underneath. This is okay. All remaining Steri-Strips may remain in place and will fall off themselves. You may continue to shower and pat dry. It is also important that you observe your wounds for any signs or symptoms of infection. These include persistent redness and swelling, continual or increase in pain at the surgical sites, the area feels warm to touch, fluid drainage that is cloudy or foul smelling or the presence of pus, and fever. Please ensure to contact us if you have any concerns or doubts about your wound. Eating and drinking after surgery. For weight loss surgery, a pre and post operative diet plan and relevant information will be provided for you by our dietitian. You will need to start the OptiFast diet two weeks prior to your surgery. This not only optimizes weight loss prior to surgery, but reduces the size and accumulation of fat around the liver. Initially, after surgery, you will only have sips of water for comfort. The next day, you will have a gastrograph and swallow. Once your surgeon has viewed your results, you will then progress to a fluid diet for two weeks post-surgery. You should aim for a minimum of one liter of fluids a day. If you have any issues, concerns or questions regarding your diet and fluid intake, do not hesitate to call or email a dietitian to assist you as soon as possible. Physical activity after surgery. Early mobilization and normal physical activity is allowed and highly encouraged. This prevents the development of chest infections and deep vein thrombosis in the legs and lungs and assists recovery. DVT prevention is very important and you should wear your knee length compression stockings throughout your hospital stay and for one week after discharge from hospital. During your hospital stay, it's important to walk within the ward and sit out in the chair and practice deep breathing and coughing exercises. This helps with your breathing and clearing your lungs, thus lowering the risk of developing a chest infection. You should be aiming to go for a walk and perform your breathing exercises every hour. A good way to remember this is to set a reminder on your smartphone. For the first two weeks after your surgery, we encourage starting with the gentle walking routine. Avoid heavy lifting and strenuous activity. You will be advised regarding commencing other activities at your two week post-operative follow-up appointment with your surgeon. Treatment of constipation. It is common for your normal bowel regime or routine to be disrupted post-surgery. This is a result of fasting prior to your surgery, dietary changes, general anesthesia, not being as mobile, and certain analgesia that have constipation effects. If you have not had a bowel motion for three days post-surgery, you may want to consider a gentle laxative such as Benefiber, Lactulose, or Muvacol. These are all available over the counter at your local pharmacy. Also, ensure you are drinking adequate amount of water at least one litre daily. Driving after surgery. Depending on the type of surgery you have had, anaesthesia and the analgesics prescribed will determine how long you have to wait till you can resume driving. Generally, the recommendation ranges from 72 hours to one week post procedure. Make sure you organize for someone to pick you up from the hospital on the day of your discharge. Returning to work. This is dependent upon the type of surgery you have had done and the nature of your occupation. Your surgeon will advise you during your initial preoperative consultation how soon you may return to work. If you require a medical certificate or a carer certificate, please advise your surgeon during your hospital stay or at your two week follow up post operative appointment. If you have any questions or concerns, phone our friendly team here during business hours at Melbourne Gastro Surgery on 9466 7799. Alternatively, you may address these questions and concerns during your pre-operative phone call by the practice nurse or email at support at melbournegastrosurgery.com.au. For urgent matters after hours, phone 04211 where you will be put through to one of our surgeons.